Hello, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you could animate uh, various attributes uh, within Maya. So let me show you what I have right here in my scene. I, I just have this text here. And before I do anything, I wanna make sure that I remind you to make sure you set your project directory. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So, but in this scene, what I have, I just have this text. What I wanna do, I'm gonna show you how we could uh, change the, the uh, I'm using some of the attributes to uh, make the uh, extrude larger so it kind of grows out. And then I want to show you how we could also change the color. So I just have this text and I just have a floor plan for right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to file menu up here and I want to go ahead and set my project directory. So very important because we're going to start uh, rendering. So I want to make sure your project directory is set. I'm going to go to project window. And this window right here, I already have a project, but I'm gonna go ahead and just create another, another one just to show you again. I'm gonna go and tell it new. And for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it this uh, Art326 logo. And on this folder, we would select the location, but I already have the location where I wanna have this file set. So it's gonna go into this project folder and the Pro, the current project will be called R326 logo. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to accept. And of course, the first thing that we wanna do is save this file out and file. I'm gonna to go, to, go ahead and select uh, file save scene as. And in this window here, uh, I have animation rendering demo. I'll go ahead and rename this to Art326 logo demo. I can go ahead and tell it to save scene. And this scene is now saved. I am using the student version of Maya. So we get this. So great. And that's gonna be really important when we start to render. So what I wanna show you right now is I don't have any animation. Uh, this is a text created in Maya. If I go into the attribute editor, I'm gonna click on this button or this tab over here on the far uh, right side of my screen. Under the type tab, because Maya has a construction history, you are able to add keyframes. Previously, we've been working with keyframes in regards to translate, rotate, and scale. But now I want to show you how you can use keyframes for other attributes within Maya. In this case, we are in the type tab for this, for this type under geometry here. And as I scroll down, under extrusions, for example, right here, there is a value of uh, extrude distance was 0.4. You can see we could have this grow over time and say, maybe we wanna do that for our animation. We want our, uh, the extrusion could, to grow over time. I'm gonna show you how we could do this. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 0.4 cause that's where I wanted to start off at. And maybe I don't want it to start right at the first frame, but say maybe a second in. So I'm gonna say at frame uh, 24. Right now, I, a couple of things that I wanna point out is that I do have for my animation preferences right here on the bottom right hand corner, I do have within my settings, uh, playback speed is at 24 frames per second up here, frame rate. And it is playing in real time, 24 frames a second. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to save. And also, also, I am turning on the auto keyframe. So at frame 24, I want to go ahead and key this. To create a keyframe for an attribute right here that we could change over time, you right mouse click over the word extrude distance and I'm gonna tell it to set key. You notice that this is now red, but notice that within the timeline, it's not showing your actual key frame. That's because this is, uh, a, it's, it's a different attribute that is not here within the timeline. That does not display within the timeline. But if we go into Windows, Animation Editor's Graph Editor, we could see that for this type mesh, it's still plotting that the extrude distance has a key. 
Now I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this for a moment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and move this, say, up to frame. Maybe it's going to take uh, two seconds. So 24, 48, uh, 72. I now want to have this grow out. How much? Eh, like this looks fine. And if you notice, because I have my auto keyframe turned on, it's automatically adding a keyframe. So uh, also I have this uh, cache playback turned on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tr turn this off right now. What this does, it's just kind of saving it to memory, but this isn't really intensive. So uh, I don't necessarily need to save it. I'm gonna go ahead and press play, rewind and play. And you can see how we now get this playback. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. If we bring back the graph editor, I minimized it previously. I'm gonna go ahead and within this window, I'm gonna press uh, F. And you can see right here, we have our curve, our graph curve. And right now it's giving us a kind of like the ease in and ease out, which I kind of like. So as we play, we could see how I'm going to close this window. It's growing out. Great. So that's one way how we could, I'm going to stop this, how we could use uh, animation keyframes for attributes. The next thing that I want to show you is how we could also say, for example, uh, use keyframes on, on other attributes. This time what I want to do, as we created this type, I'm going to open up the graph editor. I'm sorry, not the graph editor, the hypershade. And within the hypershade, I'm going to it open up my hypershade in my other window. I'm just going to resize it. So it created this type blend. And right now that color is just this gray. Now say for example, maybe as we start off, what if I want the color, we'll go ahead and leave it at gray. And I'm gonna go ahead and just move this window off to the side for right now. And maybe at frame 24, or at frame one. From frame one to 24, I want it to have that color. So for the color right here, I'm gonna go ahead and right mouse click on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to set key. So now I'm setting the key for the color. And right here, since I have my type blend selected to make it easier, I'm gonna go ahead and close this for right now. You can see that we have the type blend material that is being displayed within the attribute editor. Great, so now at frame 24, for example, now say I want it uh, from frame one to 24, I want it to be this white color, but then at frame 24, I want it to turn red, and then because it's growing, so what I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and change the color to red, and notice what happens because I had the auto keyframe turned on, it is now adding a keyframe. And right here I had, it's growing out and maybe at frame, that stops at frame 72 here. I now want a different color. And this time maybe I'm gonna just select yellow. And maybe it's gonna be yellow for that one second. And at frame, 96, I want it to go back to white. But if I play this, it's now changing these colors, which might be cool, but it's not what I want. I do want this, but I want, I want it from frame one to 24 to remain white. And from 24 all the way to 72, red, and then yellow from this keyframe and then white. To do this, since we already have the type blend selected, let's go back to our windows, uh, animation editors, graph editor. 
And now we could see in here, in this window here, uh, because our type blin, our blin is selected, it's showing the attributes for the, the color R, G, and B. But this time what I want to do, I, don't, I do not want to flatten these. What I want to do for these, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these tangents. And under tangents, I want to tell it stepped. And right here, you can see it's flat until it goes to the next value. I'm going to close this window. Let me rewind and let me show what we get now. As we play, you can see that the colors are kind of like on and off. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop this and save it. And these, this were two different examples of how you could apply different keyframes for various attributes within Maya. So I want you to think creatively, think about how you could potentially uh, animate uh, different variables, different attributes within Maya for your project. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.